Jason. We will go into the two brief Lowndes County cases we have this evening. The first one is a Lowndes County case, REZ 2017-09, Robert A. Register Estate Search. Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, this particular case was reviewed by the Planning Commission last month. The overall recommendation was to table it to allow for further study and analysis. As a result of that, and um, Hurricane or Tropical Storm Irma, the County Commission has not yet looked at this case. So when their meeting on September 12th was canceled, they rolled all their cases to tomorrow's meeting, which fell in line with your meeting tonight. So literally, we have the Planning Commission meeting tonight and the County Commission public hearing tomorrow night. That explains the timing. For this particular case, though, beyond the work session discussion that we've had on it, I think I'd probably offer three updates. Number one, um, certainly with the conversations we've had with those that are concerned about this case, they did turn in a petition that I've given you copies of and sent you an email about earlier this morning. Uh, as a result of that, there's around 131 signatures there. You can see some analysis. Um, I would say around 50 of those signatures are, are maybe two property owners at one property, like a husband and a wife signing for one address, but still that's a healthy amount of concern for the case. You have kind of a cover letter stating some of their position points. But with that, you'll also find a map at the back of that packet. And that map was done about 4 o'clock this afternoon. Apologize, I don't have it uh, on the presentation, but what it does show is just a large majority of those property owners who were concerned live in the area of the development. So I think that's the overall conclusion there. Uh, beyond those two updates, I think the dominant conversation has been about um, the proposed conditions that were not on uh, the table the last time the Planning Commission met. These five conditions have been agreed to by the applicant, but of course they are subject to consideration by the Planning Commission and the County Commission. But other than that, these five conditions I don't believe have had um, widespread uh, awareness by the opposition. The petition that you have was completed before these conditions were really circulated. So you have this dynamic of they clearly, the neighborhood and concerned citizens clearly were not in favor of the original proposal. However, I don't know how much analysis they've been able to do on these proposed new conditions. I can tell you I was able to send them a physical copy last Friday, but of course last Friday was just you know, 24, 48, 72 hours ago. So that's a dynamic that you're gonna have tonight at the public hearing. Um, I can't give you a widespread, you know, they all seemed in favor or against. I can tell you that it does represent a shift in the applicant's request to something that in my opinion is more palatable for the surrounding area and the neighbors. That is a, a definite shift, but how much of that they will accept, I think we'll find out in a few minutes. Any questions for staff, Commissioner? Yes, Commissioner Glavin? Well, Jason, at the last work session, <clears throat> uh, I brought up the, I had a question about open space requirement mm -hmm. that would have been requested if this had been a PD, especially my concern, as I have noticed in the previous meetings, is that this is a very large tract. Mm -hmm. It's over 120 acres. Um, and that you kind of sent me the information that they were by email, so I have that information. Has that been discussed at all with the applicants? Is there, has that been engaged? No, ma'am. No. I mean, I. They are aware of the PD requirements as far as, look, if you drop your lot size any further, you're going to trigger a master plan. And there's certain expectations with that. But as far as, you know, a conversation about a certain requirement or a certain amount, no matter. Any other questions for staff? Okay, okay. Um, is, is there still a commercial track down there off of, uh, with, off of uh, facing 41? Do you mean the city that was withdrawn? That was what was withdrawn. Okay. Yes. Sir. They right. they withdrew the city of Lark, city of Lake Park okay. commercial request, right. and then they've agreed to a condition that does withdraw the commercial request from this if the planning commissioner, or county commissioner wants to. Okay. And Jason, you said you sent the new conditions out on Friday. I did. Um, so I I've made now two contacts with I, I feel like are kind of one of the lead organizers with some of the people who are concerned, and I sent it out to one of them. Friday, and I know both of them got it over the weekend and, and were able to disseminate it, but I think how much of that actually gets to the individual people before tonight is, is still a fair question. Any other questions for staff? That 13.5 acres, commercial, that was for that It's in the southwestern corner service where they were proposing that commercial, uh, and 
they have agreed that if the commission so chose to say we don't, we would rather not have that commercial there with that condition, they've agreed to take that off the table. Any other questions, commissioners? There being none, at this time I'll open it up to the floor. Anyone here tonight wishing to speak in favor of this request, please come forward this time. State your name and your address for the record, please. Nathan Smith with the Herman Company, uh, Dallas, Georgia. Uh, Thirty-eight ninety-five Creek, Dallas, Georgia, three one six zero one. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Well, thank you, and, and uh, I guess as Jason said a few weeks ago, we was here, you know, and, and we kind of, you know, we heard the concern from the citizens, so we, we went back and talked with the owner and made some changes and that we feel like that, you know, we we'll suit the property and maybe there's more apples and apples because one of, like I said a few weeks ago, there is R T N all around this property. But one, you know, I just want to kind of go over the conditions to make sure they're clear for what we want to do instead of four lots per acre, move it down to three, which is more like the properties at the ponds, at Fox uh, Ridge, you know, and then all the R10 property that's on Corbett Road and all the bottom road. So that's one thing we're doing, and we want to make a stipulation in there that no mobile homes, no modular homes, no duplexes are allowed on this property. One of the things I want to kind of point out tonight, you know, just from a standpoint of the way the property sits now, I think it's important for everybody here to understand, R1, currently, you could put mobile homes and have 80 foot right away with all roads going to the outside. That currently the way it stands right now. If we get this zone, there'll be no mobile homes, no modular homes, and all the, in, the lots will have interior roads going inside. There won't be that, any driveways going to the outside of this, you know, and, it, and it's surrounded by roads. I think that's important that everybody understand that. Uh, and also, we're taking the, the 13, we took the 1.6 acres in Lake Park, we took it off the table, we drew it, and we're adding the 13.7 that's in the county, the commercial taking it off the table too, and we're drawing that stuff. And, and again, I just want to repeat, you know, just they're not trying to do anything island zoning. I mean, it's just it's what's around the property, and, and this family's owned the property for 60 years and didn't pay taxes on it. They just want the same rights as it, all the other people around. It. So, mm -hmm. that's, that's cool. Just, I just, just for clarification, do you and Jason both, Mr. Smith, that the 13.7 is going to be added into the mix for the to get rezoned for residential, if you will? Yeah, the R10. R10. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Commissioners, any questions for the presenter? What about uh, over there where Ronnie Saul's lives and the Jefferson homes over in there? Nathan, you know what I'm talking about on 41? He was concerned about a buffer being put in there, some kind of shrubbery or something, some kind of buffer. Sure, that be considered. Yeah. I know if, if it ever was commercial, you would have to put a buffer or a burn or something in there. But I think, you know, if a developer comes and wants to, you know, he's going to have to come back in front of you with a plan, you know, and uh, have to ask when they're going to address that. Okay, I just want everybody to hear that. Commissioners, any other questions for the presenter? Yeah, I do. Well, Commissioner Gladwin? Yes. So, as I was saying earlier, one of my concerns is it's not necessarily the density, it's just simply that this is a very large property and to just simply do just a rezoning of it and just simply, in my mind, I'm just picturing this thing as you know, platted, maximum number of, of lots. And so, and my concern is some sort of a open space requirement. Typically for a large property where a PD would have been required, and this being residential, which is what we're asking for, the the land regulations that we have would have required 15% of the property to remain as open area, and within that 15%, you can allocate 25% of that 15% to be used for stormwater management. I, I'm just, I don't know, maybe this is a new concept or something new to discuss, but I'm interested to know if that is something you might, uh, you might uh, consider. Well, 
I think that will be left up to the developer, whoever buys the property. You know? I mean, all the owners are doing is trying to put it in a better position to sell with, with that zone. I mean, it, it's like if, if the developer comes for PD zoning, I mean, you know, that can include apartments or anything like that. You know, we're not asking. For that. <coughs> well, I mean, and then all that will have to be addressed. You know. I understand you're not asking for a PD, but just because of the significance, the size of this property, which, which really, um, I mean, if you compare it to the area around it, it's a significant, it's the size of a town. And so, to me, it feels like there ought to be some sort of um, reservation or something to address some sort of an open area in there, so it's not maximized, just one, one lot after the other would just you know, a grid of streets of some sort. And so that, that is, I think that would help with also the, the density issue and the size of the lots to say that part of this property ought to be considered for common open area. And I'm not saying parks, I'm just simply saying just some sort of an open area. And that could be spread around. I mean, it could be up to the developer, but I think we ought to consider some sort of a, of open area criteria that should be as, as a, another condition. But you're not developing this property. That's right. So that would be, that that question would come up in front of a develop, a developer once this property has been purchased right. and they wanted to bring homes in. At that point in time, we could address that. No, no, no it would not be considered at that time because if we grant the rezoning, it's rezoned as whatever the conditions are with our town and the size of the lot. So what I am saying is, I think for a property this size, that's going to be a significant impact on this small community. We ought to consider some sort of criteria in there to help alleviate some of that density that the community is concerned with. I, I really appreciate your trying to work with the size of the lots and we've moved from 10,000 square feet to 14,000. But I think for a property this size, it's really, we ought to really, I would like to see a, a condition where we can have some sort of an open um, open space criteria. But again, I'm not saying a park or a playground or a community amenity or anything. I'm just saying it needs to be maintained as open. And part of that, 25% of that, would be, would be used for stormwater management. Well, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong on that, Jason. I mean, for this to be a full subdivision, I mean, isn't that going to have to be voted on and planned out? I mean, and, and all the requirements are going to have to be met before anybody can put a subdivision in. And they'll have to deal with the wetlands and everything. That's correct. That's right. Yeah. But that is just permitting, though. This it'll be a done deal when it's when it's rezoned as far as the. I, I think we're Selena. R10 with these restrictions on. I think where Preacher Gladwin is coming from is. She's talking about in normal PD requirements, you have a certain amount of property that's set aside for open space. In R10 standards, they're going to have to require or have to de develop according to stormwater guidelines. That's a given. But I think what she's arguing for, or trying to put a position for, is what about a condition that says so much of the property, some percentage of the property, has to be protected as an open space, almost like a PD. I think she's saying because of the size and scope of the property. Would you consider setting some of it aside as an additional condition, similar to what we do with PD? So I think stormwater, they're going to have to account for that no matter what they do, but I think that's what she's getting at is a certain percentage for open space. Instead of a cookie cut approach, is the way I'm. What? But <coughs> you said would have a little bit of green space in there to make it look mm -hmm. more attractive. Because we, so what we are doing, if, if this zoning passes, there's no need for a PD. So they, they may correct. go ahead with, through permitting process and actually develop a plan. And all I am trying to, as Jason was saying, to position this then is to sort of insert some sort of openness <coughs> so it's not a cookie cutter. Yeah. Where they come in there and raise the, all the trees around this property, the remaining trees that are in this property are just simply cookie cutter concepts. Approximately how much is going to be set aside for your uh, stormwater retention? You know? well, uh, based on Mr. Gladwin, I know she said 15%, and 15% is around 20 acres. And then 25% of that is about five and a half acres. If, if you use what we normally require for PD, those those acreages sound correct. Where if this was a PD development, we'd be looking at a site plan that, that set aside at least, 
I would say at least 15 acres, 15 to 20 acres for open space and stormwater management. And it's, is this uh, wetland right in the middle of it, it's going to have to be dealt with? I mean, is that, uh, I don't know how big that is, or, but you know, could, you're not going to be able to develop that without a lot of bureaucracy involved and a lot of other work. I think in my report, I want to say we tried to measure the acreage. Yeah, well, that's what, did you get the acreage on that, Jason? Mm -hmm. We did. I, I want to say we tried to get in there and look at the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Like about seven mm -hmm. acres. Mm -hmm. About 12 acres of wetlands on the property total. So, what we have to do. Okay. And so, those 12 acres, can you park a flatbed trailer on that property? Right. Well, that would be more than enough to satisfy the office. At five acres, it's what they were saying. And, and we, I am not asking for a certain percentage to be active use area. I'm just simply saying that 15% of that ought to remain as open space. And 25% of that 15% can be used for stormwater management. And already, if the property has the land, <coughs> that can come towards that. Right. I understand. So you're not saying, you know, normal PD requirements certain percentage of that, and I realize we're getting technical, it has to be like active use, like a park. And we've seen that in other PDs. You're not saying, I want you to put a 15 acre park, I just want you to reserve some of that mm -hmm. space. So it's a little bit more relaxed than PD. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for our presenter? Mr. Smith, thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else here wishing to speak in favor of this request? We have a few more minutes left. Please come forward, ma'am, take your name and your address for the record. Thank you very much. I'm a young man. Speak into the mic, Mr. Rich. Mr. Rich, what's your address on Adel, please? 1392 Rich. I'm not for that. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Vester, for approaching. <clears throat> Is anyone here tonight wishing to speak against this request? Please come forward and state your name and your address for the public. <coughs> sir. Can I pass out some pictures? You can, yes, sir. Plus, one acre plus lots. Um, 
What he also neglected to mention was the little subdivision across the street from this property called the Pond, which is his, his own third acre lot. It's, it has approximately 20 empty lots for sale right now. And if you look on the north side of the property where the registers just sold that piece of land from Charles Howard, he's divided that into 13 little lots for sale up there. So at this point, there's 30 lots or more are in right across the street from this property. And I realize that I'll, I'll go into my, my, my speech now. I, I hope what I have to say is relevant to this commission. I appreciate you all listening to me and letting me speak. Um, I realize that you or I can't control the, the, the ups and downs of the real estate market. When I moved to Lake Park in 2009, it was in the midst of the real estate uh, the market crash. I lost a fortune on my house that I sold in Adel when I moved to Lake Park. I bought my retirement home. I took a $140,000 loss on my home in Adel. I did what I had to do to sell the house and, and moved to Lake Park in, in, into our dream home. And I did what I had to do. I bit the bullet. I sold it. The market was falling. And that's what the registers, as far as I can tell, haven't done. I mean, that property, I've lived there for nine years. That property's been for sale. And from what I understand, they've been asking an arm and a leg for that property, big time money for that property for a long time. Well, this isn't 2005 any longer. This is 2017, and you have to, you have to adjust with the market. Now, coming up here shortly, uh, about another half a mile up the corner of Lakes Bowl, but right behind Fred, we're about to uh, have 85 low-income rental units become available, which is phase one. Phase two, phase three will be started shortly thereafter. Okay, so we've got a whole bunch of new uh, people moving to the area. Now we're talking about potentially building 200 more homes, which is essentially going to double or triple the size and population of the area. I mean. It, it's it's going to triple the traffic, triple the crime. You're going to have to build a new school. You're going to have to build a new fire department, a new police station. I mean, there's, there's, there are so many things. I mean, I can envision traffic signals on 4-H Club Road and Highway 41, Long Pond Road and Highway 41, Broadway and Highway. There's going to be half the traffic signals. You, can't, you won't be able to get out. I mean, I had a hard time getting out a week or so ago. And if you've ever been on Highway 41 on a Sunday afternoon when church lets out and you get into that left turn lane going to Lakes Boulevard, well, when 200 more homes go in and you can expect that line to be about a mile long. So I don't know too much about the TRC committee or, or, or the RTC committee that gave their recommendation to this project, but, you know, to me, uh, it, 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 yes, the third acre lots uh, are similar to some of the home, some of the lots that are in the area. They sold another 20 acres just north of the property uh, in the last six months to five or six of my five or six neighbors and friends of mine. Um, four people bought two acres each, and then one person bought the remaining 12 acres. That's a pending sale from what I understand. They bought it under R1 zoning, and, and you, will, you change this to R10, that just opens the door for them to come back in here next month and get theirs changed over to R10 in addition. And I just, I just don't think that, I think that 99% of the residents, the tax paying home owning, property owner residents that live across the street, next door, down the block, 99% of us are against this project. We don't have any problem with, with the one acre lots. That's why I included the, the pictures of Schoolhouse Pond. That thing's on fire right now. I drove through there today. There's three homes under construction. There's probably seven new ones that have finished in the last year. They're beautiful. It, it's a beautiful neighborhood. The same thing could be done here. Now, if somebody wants to 
my recommendation is to table this thing, and if a buyer comes along and wants to put together a development and wants to have a town hall meeting with the residents and they want to rezone it and he's got pictures and illustrations and he wants a pond and a walking trail, we'd probably be amenable to that. But right now we're just we're just we're doing this for the benefit of the registers. That's all we're doing is, is making it easier for them to sell. And it, in my opinion, I know what I have to do to sell my property. I lower the price. And it's my opinion that they could have lowered this price a long time ago, and this property would have been sold. Thank you for listening. Anyone else here wishing to speak against this request? Please come forward this time. State your name and address for the record, sir. Uh, my name is Bobby Ray, 603 Boyd, 12 Road, I just read over the standard for exercise, and really, I'm not going to get very right hot what he just said. But the only thing I see on here that we're doing at this point is genuine. Basically, the record won't make you feel the lean out of it. So with that, let me say what I kind of wanted to say. I'd like to be kind of a speak. Would you not make sure that the make it up? more informed decision to be waiting to find out who the developer's going to be so he has some sort of master plan that will show us what our uh, neighborhood will eventually look like. Uh, whether it's a third, half, one acre lots, that decision after you see what's on, what a master plan will look like, it would be a lot easier to make. Well, either way, there's going to be a lot of houses. It's going to be, if you do it third acre, they could be as much as 300 or better, even with a 25 cents that they are talking about. That's a lot of, a lot of places, a lot of houses in that area in The other thing I'd say is, I'd just like you to think about this. If it's going on across from your street, just keep in mind of what you're doing. I have nothing against the people, and I truly at this point think it should be adopted some point. Well, they went in and stripped the land because all the trees out, it looked like a crash of them. It's all full of weeds and it's garbage. She's made her money off her, and she went to make more. Work. So don't let her destroy everybody else. Excuse me, can I just, can I just add something? I forgot to tell you what the other picture was. Uh, you can, sir. Just, you will both. Go ahead, sir. Okay, I'm sorry. I just wanted to, to, to show you the picture. That, that's, what, that's what the neighborhood looks like now. That's, that stop sign is right across the street from the property. That's how the county is taking care of this property now. The, the sign with its back to the road, that's also on the register pro I mean on the street right in front of the register property. These are, this is just proof that the county isn't taking care of the the, the neighborhood. Now what are they going to do when they put in 200 more houses? And that bottom left hand picture, that is the neighborhood over there off of Highway 41. That is one of those neighborhoods with all the driveways in the middle of the in the middle of the development. And you can see the back of it the county's not taking care of it. The weeds are growing up all over here. There's, there's, there's tree of weeds. It's, it's just a mess. Fence is falling down. It's, it's a real eyesore. And that's what I just, you know, my point in, in, in attaching that picture was to let you know, listen, in my opinion, the county's not doing a good job of taking care of the roads and signs and everything else now. What's it going to be like when we triple the population? Thank you. Thanks, sir. Commissioner, we have exhausted our time on uh, our for and against from public participation. Do we have any discussion amongst ourselves or any more questions that can be asked to staff on this request? I had one, but I forgot it. <laughs> I don't believe it, Commissioner. Um,
Go ahead. I appreciate it, sir. Commissioner Williams. <laughs> um, I, I looked at the property. I know. I know it. And it's something needs to be to happen to it. I mean, if we leave it like it is presently, it's going to continue to look like that. That's just my opinion. And I do have a subdivision right across from my house, so I'm I'm not just saying that. Um, maybe we can do something like uh, Commissioner Gladwin said and put a small amount of, uh, of of the green space in that we're going to set aside anyway to try and make it look better. And uh, I don't I don't know that it can. This is just my opinion. I don't know that it can look any worse. I wrote down and looked at it, and which I've known it's been there for years because I've been here for 60 years. But um, just something to think about. It, it, you know, we can leave it alone and it look like that from now on, or we can try and polish it up just a little bit, uh, eliminate the commercial, and um, make some small changes to it like she discussed, and you know, try and improve the property and make it go forward. Um, that's my opinion. If I may add, Mr. Black? it's not really about making, you know, beautifying it, but it's really, the, the goal is to sort of try to maintain the character of the surrounding neighborhood. And we understand that the property is going to get developed eventually. So it's just simply putting in place criteria that will help sort of drive the development and the growth in that area so it does not totally impact the neighborhoods, the surrounding neighborhoods in a negative way. Um, I think R2, the, the neighborhood, the, the other sides that are in R2, and I think what the, the revised, the, the conditions that have been presented here, they are sort of compatible, I think, with the surrounding neighborhoods. But yes, I would like to see it. And I think I'm going to go ahead and push recommend that as a condition. <laughs> Um, we, we need to figure out and discuss, so I want to get some, you don't have a problem making a motion, but uh, I'd like to get a feedback on, on what, or discuss it a little bit on what y'all are thinking from uh, utilizing part of the wetland for, for a, um, a little trail around it, and I don't know if, um, I mean, I'm, I'm not saying specifically what it's got to be uh, used for, but that would help also keep up the the wetland area, a certain amounts, I, I'm assuming they're going to use some of the wetland for water retention? I would assume so. Yeah. So, I'm just thinking out of the box of, of whatever, instead of just voting it down, uh, make another small <coughs> condition so, to where it's rooted. Um, Mr. Chairman, so I'm going to understand there's three pockets of wetland, Jason, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Total 12 acres? Mm -hmm. I, on this, the 126 acres, which is the, the southern property, you have that large wetland in the middle, and then you have two other smaller pockets that are debatable. We don't have the benefit of a true wetland study, but this is what we show with our information right now. And I think those are about 12.6 acres of, of, of space on this property. And if you look, this is actually a more current area. So you can see the areas they left forested are around what I believe are those pockets and those, those areas. Those green spaces of the wetland. Yes, sir. I, I believe those the two pockets. If you look on this map that shows them, and then this map, which is a more current aerial, this is 2015. It shows where they they left trees up. And normally those those trees were probably around a small wet area or a ponded area. Mr. Chair, Mr. Hall. Uh, the has made a lot of. And you know, it's has gone a long way in meeting and making this better. Uh, right now, if heaven forbid one of the houses around this property were to have a problem and be torn down for whatever reason, they could bring a mobile home in and sit at home, manufactured home. Uh, she could now develop that property into a mobile home park. Uh, I don't want to see that. No one wants to see that. We've got 12 acres out of 126 or approximately that are already wetlands. And I don't think any developer is going to go in there and, and do anything to that because of the, the sheer cost of it and the regulations that are involved. So uh, we've got county water and sewer. 
that, that has been in place for a long time. Uh, the taxpayers have been paying for it. If we can develop this property and put taps for the, it's only sewer, I believe, water comes out of Lake Park, or maybe vice versa. But it will help pay for the infrastructure that's already there. So, and it'll lose, it will, it will, it will, it will, I know, and, and, it, and I agree with the one presenter, presenter that not all construction is good. I agree with that. But, you know, you're talking about how bad this property looks. The, the county has no business going in and, and straightening out that property and making it look better. That's totally against all the laws of the state of Georgia. Uh, they're responsible for the right of the signs. Yeah, we just had a bunch of wind come through here a couple of weeks ago, and they, they haven't got them all straightened up. may not have happened then, but, you know, there's that possibility. Uh, but as far as putting any more restrictions, I think we're, I, I don't see it. When, when it comes in and they go flat it and put a subdivision in there, I think then we can address the green spaces. Uh, and if they're going to build houses out there, there's already in the, in the uh, permitting area, there's already so many, it says in there, so many trees per house per, per acre. So there will be greens brought in on every lot. Granted, it's not going to be a big oak tree or anything like that, but there's none there already. So, you know, I just, I think we've got a, a, a good product here with what the, the uh, people who are wanting to develop this or want to sell this, I think that's a good product from them. And I agree with the people who live across the street and down the road. Uh, it's, it's not good all the way around, but we've got to move forward somewhere. So I think we just go with the conditions we have. And then we can address it when it goes into the, uh, the planning stage and, and see what can take care of it then. So they don't come back to the result, they just say, what is the minimum it's amount of, exactly. yeah, it's over with. If, what is, um, don't so come to what, nobody what is conditions, mm -hmm. what, mm -hmm. can, can there be anything what else question. that this commission or the county, mm -hmm. can they do anything at that point to ensure some sort of amenities or open area, open space in that property? If you encountered a developer that did the absolute minimum, and what would happen is it would go from the county, and I'm going to assume, I'm going to say those conditions are in place. So residential, third acre lots, you would then have to turn in a master plan to staff, along with what are called construction plans. And those are the actual, this is where the roads are, this is how much is going to be stormwater or not. Um, and you'd have to lay out a portion or at least give us a sketch for the entire property. Um, there wouldn't be a requirement from us to say you have to do a clubhouse, pool, some kind of a mini package. That would be left up to the developer. Um, those plans will be approved uh, by staff. We would get them to the point that says, here's what we think you need to approve this. They would show that, and then from that, they would either construct one phase or the entire development. Um, the only special studies that I'm aware of for this particular property is they'd have to certify where are the wetlands that you're not going to negatively impact those? You'd have to certify stormwater to make sure you're not going to negatively impact any adjacent property with water. You'd also have to provide a traffic study with this size of property. We would want some assurance with the state that there wouldn't be any negative traffic impacts. And if there are, where are you going to add you know, lights or turn lanes, et cetera? But that would be the, the minimum that would be done if the zoning is successful. Those are the minimum plans that would, that would be in place. So there is no other opportunity as far as the public's involvement mm. or the commission, neither the this planning commission or the county, mm. to actually ask or require some sort of assurances like what we are discussing. Yes, this is, so if, if this is a, unless a PD comes forward, which is a entirely different process. Right. Okay. Unless so that so developer comes back and says, I want to do smaller lots mm -hmm. or change the conditions, mm -hmm. then the public hearings will be tonight and tomorrow.
to Jason, what if the property gets subdivided? So we set a condition in now mm -hmm. that says a certain number of acreage should be set aside for green space, and then the property gets subdivided. We would have to carry that condition out um, on the plats or on the multiple developers somehow. And if the condition was there, then we would be responsible for trying to make sure how do you enforce that, how do you make sure that happens, whether it's one developer or five. We would try to figure out how to, how to make sure that was still there. Okay. Y'all happy? I'm ready. <laughs> ready <to draw. laughs> if there's no further discussion, Commissioner, I will take a motion on this line item for tonight. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. I make a motion that we approve the rezoning from R1 to R10, excluding the number five which is going to be in the uh, uh, condition along with number one all lots shall front interior roads number two the minimum lot size shall be 14,520 square foot not to exceed three lots per acre no manufactured homes are allowed two family dwellings or duplexes are not allowed. And number five, as I started out saying, 13.7-acre uh, track proposed to be rezoned to general commercial zoning will instead be rezoned to suburban density residential R10 as the rest is and the other four conditions. And I'd like to add a sixth condition. The wetland that is not used for water retention or even with the water retention it must be landscaped and be uh, attractive to where it does not take away from the uh, from the development and if any other is needed not to exceed five acres for green space and that's it Explain that last position. Okay. If there's, if, if, in other words, if, if all of the 10 acres or 12 acres or whatever it is for green space is needed for water retention, you can set aside up to a five acre track however he wants to do it for, you know, like for a walk track around that or however um, to make the subdivision more eye appealing and attractive where it don't just detract from any of the other properties around. Just a clarification from me. You're, 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 we, we're yeah. estimating a park of 12 acres of existing wetland. Yeah, if we so knew exactly how much. Those with an additional five acres? Now, it, it, if you use the entire 12 acres for wetland, I mean for uh, water retention, yes, you can go above that 12 acres by five acres, and I'll leave that to the developer as to where it goes in, in the plan. But if you, you you only use, so is that a condition within a condition? Yes, this is a this is an extra condition. If you only use, I might have to be a little more Please. clarify that a little bit Please. more. Okay, why don't we do this? Let's go back with the number six condition and say, whatever land is not used within the water retention area in the wetland area must be uh, used for green space and. Recreation. Yeah, Can I say that again? Yeah, Carmel, sure. can you repeat that? I, think. I was trying to make sure we have like five acres, and I wish I, I knew exactly. I, I wish I knew how much. The rest of the land, period. I wish I knew how much wetland it was, because we and how much uh, retention you were going to have. We would know exactly. That's what we don't. Yeah. Have. I, 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 Guideline where it, it calls up for a percentage, and we are saying 15% is how many acres? About 19, 19, 19. 
So do you want to say 15 acres of that? I, I think that's a little much. In, in that personally, but um, can you clarify the motion? Okay, why don't we do this? Um, all my motion is stands all the way to number six because we're discussing number six and trying to clarify that. Um, five acres are set aside for uh, green space and uh, recreation area, whether it be within the wetland if possible or outside we will leave that to the developer yeah. you can use the wetland if there's enough left so if you got 12 then there's no, there's no problem with yeah if, 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 if the, 12 acres wetland we're going to exceed the five acres anyway yeah and you you know just put one acre into it make sure we got five acres of a, a green space and I think your point though is you want to make sure that they utilize the wetlands as part. Well. Yeah, you're going you're going to utilize the wetland for water retention, and if there's five acres left out of that twelve or however many it is for a for a recreation area, fine. If it is totally used for water retention, five acres is the maximum you can set aside above that for minimum for green space. Jackson, how would that be? Well, what we how, how would you enforce that? What we don't know is let's just say there's twelve acres of wetlands. What we don't know is how much space they're going to need for detention, and that takes that takes a little more homework. That takes talking to like an engineer to say, "Hey, look, 100 acres. How much do you think is going to be necessary?" Well, based, based on what detention. Mr. Gladwin said earlier, it takes 5.5 acres for water retention. Based on that for that project, that's correct. Okay, there's enough within the green within the green space. Then. That's right. So okay. to me, that's that's the unknown. That was truly knowing how much do you really need to accommodate for that water. But y'all's intent is to say, look, I want you to accommodate for that water because you're going to have to. But then beyond that, I want you to accommodate for this certain amount that is a protected open space or green space area. Within, within the green space, if it's available, if not, the it's maximum important. amount that you can set aside would be five acres for recreation area. And then put a park, you can put a walk track, and do whatever you want. <laughs> Just as long as this. So what I hear is you accommodate for your detention retention areas and you you do five acres beyond that I, i'm not getting that i mean I, i'm not clear because if they no. 12 that's all it's going to be is 12. that's right so if, I, I need that stated where there's no confusion okay. because i'm confused if there is 12 acres there mm -hmm. let's just use that for example and it's five acres that it takes for the water retention for that project that leaves seven acres you have enough within that five acres to meet your green space. to meet your green space if it took 100% of that green space, the most that you could take was five acres outside of the green space. Mm -hmm. Was that clear enough? Yeah. Okay. Mr. Chairman, what he's saying is you're, you've got 12 acres of wetland, but according to Ms. Glavin's uh, uh, calculations, it would take five acres for water retention. Mm -hmm. So that means there's seven acres extra there that they can use for green space. However, if the calculations were incorrect and say it took 10 acres for water retention, that only left two, two acres. You had so three you could more. have three more somewhere, somewhere mm -hmm. to add to the five acres. I want to clarify Okay, I did not specify. What, you you, you just read the PD report. Yeah, yeah. Not, I, we, are not, not yeah. we are not specifying what how cool. much uh, acres is needed for water retention because none of us know that. That's that. correct. Uh, yeah. So, what I understood. Is that uh, the wetlands can be used towards required stormwater management? If the entire acreage that's part of this wetlands is required as part of the water okay. stormwater management, then the developer of this property is required to have up to five, not to exceed five acres for open space. Correct. Correct. I think that's what you're saying. Mm -hmm. and I think that, okay. So you would have your stormwater retention, which is a green space, and there'll be, I'm sure, landscape around that, or grass or whatever. And then, if he has room in there, he uses the five acre within that wetland to do his park or walk track. Or, I'll leave that to the developer. There'll be addition, you know, for the green space to be maintained. It won't just be growing. I'm going to have to do some work on that for tomorrow. But I, I understand what y'all are 
go into one. We just need to sit down with that for a week and figure out how that's going to get past the county attorney. Because right now it's not going to get past him. Huh. But maybe if how I can. How would you state it then? I, I think y'all were, were. There's an unknown in stormwater, and yep. we're just not going to know that unless we table it and they get an engineer involved, and, and that's just a fact. Why don't we just say five acre track for a green would, space to be determined by the developer? I would say if you do a percentage or you do the minimum five acres of duck free all around, then we can ensure that the five acres open space, et cetera. And you probably should clarify is that outside of detention? And I think it is. You need to reserve five acres for green space, recreation area, open space somewhere in the development. And he could take it out of his wetlands. Y yes. Uh, yes, as That's long as you're is. not, you know, I think what y'all are trying to say is, I don't want you to call an open space a detention pond. Don't, don't go in there and put a detention pond in there and say, that's my open space. That's, we that's want something to be And I understand that. But that, that to me is something that I think will be more important for staff than to try to use that calculation that we just don't know yet. Because if I knew it, I would tell y'all and we would use that. I just can't, I can't give that to y'all because I don't know that. I need a little more time to get that. So if you, my recommendation, if you're going to go that way, is to say, I'd recommend that at least five acres of this development be a protected open space, green space, et cetera, area. Or right? you can say a total of five acres. They can split them up into smaller areas if they want. And they can put it where he wants it. That's right. But and and you know none of that acreage can be used for stormwater. Yes. Something like that. Okay. So that way they don't they don't abuse that for a stormwater pond, but they also are forced to provide some kind of green space park area, open space area. Right. Well, with that being said, would yep. you like to re-clarify your condition? Everything through sir? five is the same, and on six, we, exactly what he said, five acres <laughs> utilized for, uh, set aside for can you recreation area. Uh, can you do that? Can you say what he said? No. <laughs> but it cannot be, the, the five acres cannot be part of the water retention for the subdivision. The five, five additional just want five acres just to, to, to make a, make, and it's up to the developer to cosmetically put it in wherever they want to put it at. Commissioner. Uh, I guess what you're trying to say is you want to have five acres of land set aside that would be suitable for use for recreational purposes yes. by the people living in this. Yes. Why didn't you say that one good? That's what he said. You did a good job, thank you. <laughs> okay. So we have a motion with the existing five conditions. We have a condition added by Commissioner Willis. Jason, you look at me like I need to say something else. No, I mean I'm just, you know, what's gonna happen is we're gonna take this. Carmel and I we'll get together and figure out, okay, we think this is the intent, and then we'll have to write it and prepare it so it's ready for consideration by the county tomorrow. But I get the intent. The intent is to provide minimum acreage on this property so that outside of stormwater they have to provide that amenity as a, as a base requirement. Base requirement. Mr. Glavin? Good? Yes. Alright, so we have a motion. Do I have a second? Commissioner Willis got a motion. I have a second? I'll second. Have a second for Commissioner Hall. Any dis additional discussion on the motion and a second before we vote on this? I hope not. Okay. <laughs> that being said, all in favor of the motion with the attached six conditions. If you approve that, please say confirmation of right hand. That's seven for anyone against. Anyone wish to abstain? We have one. Marlon passes seven zero one. I speak, Mr. Chair. Sure, for briefly. I abstain from it, not that I'm uh, against it or not, I'm for it. I think mediation has went on far, far of the situation, and I can read both sides, the people that live down there and this register side, and I feel like the mediation has gone on good and the work has been taken out. So that's, that's what I want to say. Thank you, sir. Jason, appreciate your patience with us on that case. We'll see if we can't go this one a little bit more hastily. It is 11-1.